Yeah, for more perspective on the emerging amnesty report, we're joined by Olga Deutsch, the vice president of NGO Monitor. Uh, thanks for being with us here. Uh, Israel's not against criticism, certainly not above it, much of it emerging internally uh, all the time. But what, what in your perspective is problematic in this report from amnesty? Hi, thanks for having me uh, and for addressing this uh, charade. I might, uh, I might say, I think Amnesty um, takes uh, takes it to the next level this time. I mean, it is a known fact that Amnesty has a history of uh, anti-Semitic incidents and its staff uh, promoting anti-Semitism bias. They promote uh, promoting BDS, but this report takes it really to the next level. It sort of makes a charade of uh, human rights uh, issues and uh, makes a charade of what uh, Amnesty. Amnesty International uh, claims it tries to do. To blame Israel uh, of apartheid crimes, the only uh, country in the world since uh, since this was an issue in South Africa is nothing short of a, of a scandal. Um, just so we are, uh, so we have a broader context, uh, Amnesty's 211 pages report that was released today uh, blames Israel of uh, state-owned apartheid since its creation in 1948. So if until now we discussed, you know, we had uh, discussions around whether there is legitimate criticism of certain policies of the state of Israel, whether there is a different, whether there is a political discussion uh, concerning what is done um, inside of Israeli borders and beyond the, what is called the, you know, 67 or the green line. Now, Amnesty erases all that and basically equates uh, what Israel does in Haifa, in Tel Aviv, in Jerusalem, in Ramallah, and in Gaza. Okay? It completely omits any notion of uh, terror on the Palestinian side, it promotes the most blatant anti-Semitic tropes, like uh, using by using terminology like uh, Jewish domination over inferior Palestinian people. It blames uh, uh, Jewish national institutions like Jewish Agency and the World Zionist Organization of promoting state-owned discrimination, systematic ones since the creation of the State of Israel. Um, it basically artificially um, uh, manipulates the laws uh, of the state of Israel that is mainly there to, to preserve the Jewish identity of Israel as the only Jewish democracy in the world. Essentially, what the report does is uh, calls for the destruction of the state of Israel as a Jewish state and uh, uh, as, a, as a manifestation of the Jewish right for self-determination. What do you make of the ambiguities that exist? There's been an uptick in reports of Israelis in the West Bank attacking Palestinians recently, vandalizing property. We see the IDF and the Israeli government seemingly struggling with how to crack down on that situation, how to manage legally what takes place out there. Recent disagreements between the internal security minister and the IDF chief of staff highlighting this. Aren't these major openings for groups such as Amnesty, this, this type of ambiguity that exists? Well, I think it's important to distinguish uh, propaganda from actual factual discussions. You know, should Amnesty have wanted to discuss any of these incidents properly, you know, um, then I think it would have been a, a serious discussion. But let me, let me, um, let me uh, share a counter example to you so, so, so you understand what is the context in which Amnesty uh, brings this report to, to the public. In the, uh, in the opening pages of the report, Amnesty describes the, the, inter, the, the, the clashes uh, that happened in uh, various cities in, uh, in the spring of 2021. And um, deliberately, it phrases it by saying that the, is the Jewish police was uh, um, purposely um, uh, uh, applying violence on Palestinian citizens in Israel while the Jews were attacking Palestinians. Now, everyone that lives in Israel and everyone that was even watching the the news back then knew that there were uh, there was violence on both ends, and then there was no one in Israel that did not condemn uh, each of these incidents. It's it's a fabrication of whatever happens here. So I don't. Think I think we can even uh, take this in the context of let's discuss this or uh, one or another incident. Um, but what, what I want your take think also it is a serious on the response of Israel. So far, we've seen the foreign ministry emerge really uh, coming after Amnesty International, anti-Semitism being thrown around, all these uh, very charged terms. Is there a better response from the Israeli government, perhaps, to engage in these in these reports? 
I'm not sure anyone should seriously engage with amnesty. Amnesty does not represent a certain constituency. Amnesty does not represent a community, nor a certain government, nor the international community, nor does amnesty hold the, uh, you know, the monopoly of uh, human rights or the international law. Uh, Israel should continue to engage with other uh, governments um, and not with amnesty, as long as amnesty promotes uh, pro propaganda like this. It is not only these the Israel, uh, the Israeli government and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs condemn it. Uh, all the major Jewish organizations on all parts of the political spectrum condemned it uh, using one term, calling it anti-Semitic uh, in its nature. So, um, and it is important to also say what's behind this. Amnesty is not alone in launching a, a campaign um, for two years now, at least, uh, trying to attach the term ap apartheid to Israel uh, with the sole goal of promoting uh, the case against the state of Israel at the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Um, I think, uh, you know, Human Rights Watch, Betzelem, Israeli group have joined this campaign promoting the same and similar terminology of uh, uh, Jewish supremacy and Jewish domination and so on. We should continue to engage with uh, other governments and elected officials in making a serious uh, case uh, for Israel and discussing legal issues. I don't think there's a, as long as amnesty promotes anti-Semitism and singles out Israel, the only Jewish democracy in the world, um, I don't think there should be, there is any room for engaging with them in any serious matter. I believe that's a key uh, factor here, the robust democracy that Israel is. You don't see many of those condemned by these groups around the world. Olga Deutsch, Vice President of NGO Monitor, thank you for being with us. Thank you.